Hey class, hopefully you are doing quite well on this wonderful day. This is our video on our um, power recovery lab. So this lab will be very, very similar to the Marguerite Coleman um, power test. However, there are going to be some subtle differences because we're going to be looking at how one energy system in particular recovers uh, between certain amounts of time and repeated bouts of exertion. So let's just talk about this just a little bit. I think that most of this should likely be a review or at least hopefully you've heard some of this um, uh, before. Uh, well, I, I, I'll go back just a moment. Um, with this one, you have a choice of submitting either a video or numerous pictures and also, of course, the worksheet at the end that, you know, we have down here. It's uh, not a very long worksheet. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we get on through this. So, okay, let's get back into the background, which I do want you to read this. I'm just going to explain uh, a little bit of it to you right now. So, we have broadly three energy systems that we utilize to produce ATP, you know, the energy currency of our body. So, we actually don't um, use carbohydrates or fats or anything like that for energy. We actually, um, through a multi-step bioenergetic process with all of those di different amounts of steps for each one, of course, um, we create ATP with, you know, the stored chemical energy within these different macronutrients and things uh, like that, right? So, um, let's just talk about the duration of these three systems, which um, the three systems are the phosphagen system or the ATP um, CP, the PCR system. All of these are different terms utilized to mean the same thing. So typically that energy system, we think about that producing energy for um, high intensity bouts of exertion lasting upwards of 10 seconds. A lot of the literature on it shows five to eight seconds and then our creatine phosphate stores are basically depleted. So uh, creatine, it has like a phosphate on it and then whenever ATP gets broken down to ADP, then we take that phosphate off with the creatine kinase enzyme and we throw that phosphate onto um, the ADP to make ATP to, you know, prolong our effort, right? Now that can actually be modulated somewhat by supplementation. So if you take creatine monohydrate, which um, there are numerous forms of creatine, however, um, few have been shown in the literature to be any better than creatine monohydrate. And creatine monohydrate, at least last I checked, is the cheapest form of creatine. So there's really not that, uh, I, if, if you had to pick one, that's one that I would pick. Um, but we might be able to extend that system ever so slightly. Um, and that only lasts for upwards of 10 seconds. Maybe if you get your muscles super saturated with uh, uh, phosphocreatine, then maybe we can get to 15 seconds. However, the literature is kind of spotty on that. Um, the next system, uh, frequently called the glycolytic system, the anaerobic glycolysis system, um, or the lactic acid system, uh, that's what a lot of individuals will call it. That one provides energy for upwards of two minutes. So typically with that one, I like to think about running a 400 meter dash or um, uh, uh, 800 meter dash if you're pretty quick. Um, this system is the one that certainly hurts the most. That's the most painful system. Um, uh, it can... Uh, uh, actually increase acidity within a muscle. Now, th there is a lot of stuff. So lactate actually buffers acidity, but whenever we're producing um, uh, energy through this with the NADH and all of that type of stuff, the H's are kind of released, and that's really what we're um, feeling as the acidity. Um, and then lastly, the aerobic system, which this one, just any long duration effort that you could possibly do. So it typically kicks in about um, three minutes, two minutes if you're really aerobically fit, and then it can last um, more or less indefinitely, right? So with these three different systems, if you're ever wanting to train them, these are different ways how you can actually train them. So the phosphagen system, um, we have a work-rest ratio 
of um, 1 to 12 or 1 to 20. So let's just do some really simple math on this really quick. If you exert yourself really hard for 5 seconds, then you need to rest for about uh, on the 12 end, um, 60 seconds in order to do that effort again. Now you can uh, rest quite a bit longer and actually have more synthesis or resynthesis of um, phosphocreatine, but that's typically the training protocol to train that system in particular, and lots of athletes do this. Um, the next system, uh, the like glycolysis, fast glycolysis, lactic acid system, anaerobic glycolysis, whatever you want to call it, all of those terms are more or less synonymous. Um, 30 seconds uh, to 2 minutes, something in that nature. A 1 to 3 or 1 to 5 work to rest ratio. So if you, um, you know, crush it for uh, about 60 seconds, then, you know, 3 minutes you probably need to rest or 5 minutes. So if you're trying to work on those 400 meter repeats, that's kind of a good idea for training that system in particular. That can also do a lot of really interesting stuff in shifting the type of lactate dehydrogenase enzyme um, that we have. Uh, and then the oxidative phosphorylation or the aerobic system, um, that system uh, is basically like a one-to-one -one ratio, or in fact, a lot of times people don't even uh, rest with this. So a, a lot of individuals will, you know, work really hard for three minutes, then rest for three minutes, and then work really hard for another three minutes and rest for another three minutes. So that's um, uh, kind of how a lot of different individuals will train these systems. And training these three systems is uh, really important for individuals from, uh, you know, elderly, geriatric, that type of thing to athletes because, well, these are the only systems that humans use, so it's important to run the gamut of all of those. Um, now, here, there's a little bit of an excerpt out of a, um, a textbook that I kind of just put right in here because I want you to read it. I think it's really interesting. Um, talking about, like, how much uh, energy per mole of, like, phosphocreatine that we actually have, but down here is really the biggest thing that I want you to notice, and this is more or less the crux of how we're going to be testing things today. Um, so from uh, fast exertion of, you know, something less than 10 seconds, which that's what we're um, going to be doing um, in this lab, it takes about 30 seconds to replenish about 70 some odd percent of the phosphogens within uh, this pathway, and three to five minutes to uh, replenish them at about 100% uh, or close to three to five minutes. Th there is some uh, differences here with like how aerobically fit you are, how much capillary density, what your mitochondrial density within all of these muscles are. So if you're really like fast twitch type person without a lot of endurance, it's probably going to take you closer to five minutes. Um, if you're a little bit more aerobically fit, sometimes even uh, two minutes because the mitochondrial de density and efficiency is just so high. Um, but what we're going to do. You have effectively um, two options for this and read through this. Um, so you can either find a flight of stairs that takes you a minimum of five seconds to ascend. Um, ideally about 10 would be good. Or you can uh, find a box to get on and off of and climb up on it, um, get down off of it, and you're going to do that for 10 seconds. And you'll just count how many ascents that you do. Now, with this, the equation that we're going to be using is just the same as the Marguerite Kellman equation. So you're going to need to take your weight in kilograms, multiply it by gravity, you know, that gives us force in newtons, and then multiply that by um, the height that you ascended, and then divide that by the seconds of the ascent. So if you're doing uh, the cl climbing up the stairs, the seconds variable, that's going to be the one that's changing because you should have a fixed height that you're going to be going up. If you choose the box, um, the seconds should be fixed at 10 seconds. And, you know, like explain this in your photos that you're taking or um, the uh, video that you're taking. However you want to do this, just prove to me that you did this lab. That's all I really want. Um, 
so that uh, uh, meters would be the variable that's actually changing because uh, going up and down the stair step, or not the stair step, the uh, box, only count the amount of ascents, don't count the downs because we're not counting eccentric work in this. Um, so that variable is going to be changing. Now here is the big thing about this lab that we're going to be doing. Um, warm up properly before both of these. I don't want anyone getting injured. Um, on the first day of the lab, you're going to do 10 ascents with only, use your stopwatch, 30 seconds of rest between each ascent. Or, you know, 10 second bout of, uh, you know, climbing onto the box. So, uh, 30 seconds, and you need to be really, really strict with this. Now, these 10 ascents, um, it's probably going to uh, suck a little bit and be a little bit uh, painful and notice that's going to be kind of a question later on like what energy systems are we really taxing with all of this so the phosphagen system that doesn't produce any acidity or anything like that so just keep that in mind um, <clears throat> so 30 seconds rest you need to be really strict on that on the second day this needs to be what is it at least 48 hours afterward at least it can be longer you can uh, you can take five days in between, whatever, as long as it's at least 48 hours. I don't want you doing this on back-to-back -back days. So the uh, second day perform 10 ascents, three minutes rest in between each ascent. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, uh, 30 seconds one time, three minutes on the other time. That will take you know quite a while. Uh, to get through, so set aside some time in order to do that. Now let's look at um, your worksheet aspect of what you're turning in. So here you need to, you know, have your body weight in kilograms, the height of um, the ascent. Um, that would, you're really only going to be uh, writing that. Well, he, here's the two uh, things that uh, you can write in there and be specific about this. The height of the box that you're climbing up upon or um, the height of the stairs that you're ascending. So measure all of those, uh, get that right there. And then on these two ascents, or not two ascents, two different time periods where you do 10 ascents, we're needing to put power in watts on all of these. And um, here, average time in seconds to ascend, that one, um, you're just going to be writing that down if you do uh, the stairs, climbing up the stairs. If, if you're climbing onto the box, that it's just going to be 10 seconds on all of those, so that's perfectly fine. Um, next thing, insert a line graph comparing both power curves. So let's go and just, you know, uh, look at that. So how I would do it would be here in Excel, ascent 1 through 10, power uh, watts short rest, power watts long rest, all of those types of things. So here I'm just going to do like a random number thing. Oh, not radians, come on. Ran between, uh, I don't know, let's do 5 and, uh, I don't know, 15, why not? I mean, uh, very, very unlikely that that's going to happen. Um, so let's just random number generation with n here, just showing you kind of how to make this graph. So this is what the graph more or less would need to look like. Highlight all of that. Insert um, right there. That's uh, now physiologically this is very not likely what the graph is going to look like um, because uh, I, I doubt there's going to be um, peaks and valleys within your curves however there could be I I, I don't want um, to um, you're, you're not physiologically broken if that's what happens um, Now, 
granted, um, here your power in watts isn't going to be, you know, between 5 and 15. Of course, it's probably going to be, you know, hundreds, if not thousands, and uh, things like that. But this is basically... Um, what your graph should look like, you know, give or take. And then, you know, you would just take that and um, uh, paste it right within here. And that's really about it for this lab. Answer a few of these questions, you know, thinking about what energy system that we're going to use and, you know, how we can test the, you know, basic, you know, endurance or recovery capacity of these different energy systems and how we can utilize this in the field or whatever occupational area that you want to go into. You know, maybe you're working with an elderly person and um, you're assessing kind of their ability to have repeated um, phosphogen-based efforts in their forearms or whatever. That, that is certainly a thing that you could do um, with things like this. Um, so just, you know, think about that, be a little bit creative, and as always, ask me um, or email me if you have any questions about any of this. All right, thank you.